Okay, so do you know that look that films have when someone's like in the frame and you know they're they're acting and it looks amazing because oh wow every light bulb and every shot around them has like this really nice filmy looking glow to it and as a filmmaker you, you look at it and you're like wow I, I really wish that my footage looked like that today you're in luck because i'm teaching you how to do it i'm gonna show you how to do it now the nice thing about this is that it works on any type of footage it doesn't really matter if it's great quality or if it's shitty quality if it's shot in log or if it's shot you know, in a normal Rec 709, it doesn't matter. What does matter is that your footage itself has some form of light source in it, and that light source has some type of like natural glow in real life that you can emulate. We're gonna bring it in Premiere Pro and I'm gonna show you how it's done. Okay, so now that Gosh, can't get in my chair. Now that we're back in the studio, we can go into Premiere Pro, press new project. Let's make uh, a called Halation Effect. That's not how you spell effect, but that's fine. Press create, we wait. Okay, and now as you can tell, my timeline is not what your timeline will probably look like. Open up your finder or import by double clicking here. It works either way. I prefer to open my finder. I have my two clips I already want to do this with selected. They won't be the clips from today because those don't have that lighting effect that I was referring to. We can double click it. I can select the in and out point of my timeline. So I'll press I on the I on the keyboard um, for my in, scroll through, find the end, press O on my keyboard. And now I have my selected points in which I want to grab that section of footage from. Uh, instead of grabbing the audio, because I don't need the audio in this case, I'm just going to take the video, drag it in, Okay, so first thing we gotta do is we have to color our footage. Now you might not have to because you might not have shot in a camera that shoots in a log format. I did, so I'm gonna color my footage real quick and then I'm gonna come back. Okay, so now that I colored my timeline, by the way, extremely quickly, this is not the right way to do it, but I got some color in there. You can see the difference. First things first, in your timeline, select your clip, hold the Alt or Option key, Windows or Mac, it doesn't matter, but find the Alt or Option key, hold it down, click on your clip and drag it up. Duplicate it is all we're doing there. You can duplicate it by Control C and then Control V and drag it on top, which is copy and paste, or like I just did, select your top clip. Now we do have the exact same clip, so if I turn it on and off, nothing will change right now, that's fine. Select that clip, we go to Effects. We're gonna type in Luma key first and make sure you do it first. You can double click it to apply it to the selected clip or you can click and drag it on there. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and add a Gaussian blur. So I have it saved in my favorites folder that I made. Double click it again. Now, if we go into our effect controls panel up here, which I'm actually going to drag down here so you can see the program still, we're gonna scroll down till we find a Luma key on threshold, go about 88. That's roughly the number I stick with and it works every time. And then on the cutoff, about 84. Uh, now, if I didn't have the Gaussian blur, nothing would really change. But because we have the Gaussian board, we're gonna go ahead and maybe throw 50 units or a value on there, throw the number 50 on there. And if you look at my highlights here, if I, if I zoom in, you know, it's a very harsh halation. Also I have some tearing in my color, cause like I said, I didn't do it right. But there is a harsh halation look that is very, very isolated and, and unnatural looking. So we're gonna keep cranking it up. Let's go 300. I'm happy with that. Now, if you go ahead and you turn on and off this layer, you can see the difference. And if you really like think it's somehow, you know, it's soft enough, but it's too intense, go ahead and change your opacity on the top layer only. Remember, it's the top layer that we're affecting, not the bottom layer. If you do the bottom layer, completely messed up, it will not be right. So make sure you're doing this to the top layer. I also wanna go ahead and make sure that my opacity currently, which is at 100 and I'm fine with, is what I needed to be set at. So if I wanted to like half this effect, but still keep the look, type 50 in, now, you know, there's a halation effect still, but it's a little softer. And you know what? I'm kind of happier with it less than 100. So I'm gonna bring it to 75 and I'm gonna call it a day there. This is very graphic intensive. It's going to take a while to both export and render. Of course, there's so much more you can do to give the film look. You can throw grain on there or some type of overlay. Both of those are fine. However, in this case, I am deciding to just keep it as it is. So. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope the format was a little bit nicer to watch as well. And that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching and um, I'm glad to be back. I'll fill you guys all in soon. Peace.